All right, hello and welcome to the Expert Inside Interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop Online, Sales Magazine, and Pipeliner CRM. Joining you from a very sunny, extremely hot actually, San Diego. Uh, and today I'm joined by John DeJulius, who is up in Cleveland, Ohio. How are you doing, John? I'm great, John. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. And John is the Chief Revolution Officer and President, uh, uh, and he's redefining customer service in corporate America today. And he wrote, I'm not even going to read them all, Secret Service, Hidden Systems that, that Deliver Unforgettable Customer Service, What's the Secret? So basically, if there's a book out there on customer service, chances are John might have wrote it. <laughs> All right. So what we wanted to talk about today was the relationship economy. So, um, so John, what is it, what, why do you term it the relationship economy and what has changed to make that uh, more prominent perhaps than it was before? Yeah. So the relationship economy is my new book that just came out and it's, mm -hmm. it's building stronger customer connections in the digital age and, um, no surprise to you or anyone. I mean, there's a, a seismic shift happening in our world today. And technology, while it's bringing us so many uh, conveniences and benefits, it's come at a significant cost. And that significant cost is the human interaction. And, yeah. you know, which, you know, has direct, you know, with customer satisfaction, employee satisfaction, and, and personal happiness. So, you know, I, I, I like to say that today's illiterate are those who have an inability to make a, a, a meaningful connection with others. It's just a different world that we're living in today. Yeah, I mean, I call it the, I like to call it the disconnected, connected world, because the more we become connected, the more disconnected we've become and devices get in the way. And we've, we've developed all these ways of being impersonal, right? And, right? and unfortunately, a lot of companies kind of latched onto this and thought, this is great. This is efficiency. This is going to save me money and all of this. And then they woke up one day to realize that people wanted something more. They wanted that human well, connection. Listen, I, you know, technology is not the enemy. Using no, no, not the human experience is, and, and you gotta, you got to balance both, um, but um, you know, building a, a, a high-tech, no-touch experience is not, you know, I'm not loyal to an app, uh, you know, but I'm loyal to a person who's built emotional capital that I know, and I know, you know, they have a spouse and little ones, and you know, I don't want to fire um, a friend, but I have no problem firing an app or, a, 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 you know, a, a one click or whatever that may be. Yeah. And it's interesting you say that because I was having this discussion the other day and we've experienced it ourselves, even with some of the technologies that we leverage as a company is that is that nowadays you can become a customer of a of a technology. You can sign up for technology and then you realize after a while, you know, something I've never really had any contact with them. Um, because it's all been done online. And then when another one comes along technology that maybe is slightly better or looks a little cooler, you've no problem switching because you haven't developed that relationship, right? Yeah. I, you know, I, I, when I speak, I show, um, I say technology is the easiest thing to copy. Um, mm -hmm. You know, when we had an innovation a decade ago or two decades ago, it might give you a competitive edge for six to 18 months. Well, today, if technology is you're only in an advancement. So I like to show these two pictures. I make them in, in black and white, but I show um, an Uber app and a Lyft app. And I ask people, you know, which is which, and no one can tell the difference until I turn it into color and one has purple and one has black right. and white. But, but you know, it, it just shows you that, you know, if I come out with something, it may give me a competitive edge for a very short time, but if you're in the same industry, the, the, the technology piece is the easiest thing for you to replicate, but you can't replicate my people. You can't replicate, you know, my relationships with my customers. That's a lot more difficult. So what are some ways that, uh, that organizations can start to, you know, perhaps ones that have drifted away a little bit can start to rebuild relationships and reintroduce some, you know, human element into their interactions with, with customers? Well, you know, we have to make no mistake about it that the lack of social skills that every generation, we, we tend to pick on the younger generations and, and bash millennials, but every generation is experienced. We have grandparents on, on social media. And, you know, you and I, um, by I'm sure our own admission, 
are, are, are looking at devices, you know, more than, than we should. And so, you know, mm -hmm. um, the lack of social skills that, that, you know, our society has today is the problem of business leaders to solve. And, you know, so there's three strategies, you know, first, you know, use technology to perform the basic tasks, enabling, you know, the employees to focus on what's most important, building relationships that result in higher customer loyalty, uh, retention and lifetime value and job satisfaction. Um, you know, the next one is, is build a culture that creates emotional connections with your employees. And we're, we're right now we're experiencing the highest turnover in the history of, of businesses. And, mm. and that's not because they're disloyal. It's because we're not creating cultures that, that you know, give them engagement. We, we are building relationships with our team members. I think, you know, the millennials, you know, are, are, the, are the best work staff if, you know, the, they're, the currency for millennials is, is, is uh, purpose. If you create a purpose, they're great, but it, they won't trade, they're not willing to trade hours for dollars. And then finally, the, the, the key point is you got to create relationship building training for new and existing employees because at no fault of their own, they, they don't have the inherent people skills that you and I were forced to grow up. I mean, they're, everyone's relationship disadvantaged because of the digital age, because of the decline in people skills, because there's high tech, no touch, touch experiences, because, you know, 40% of our, 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 our uh, workforce is reporting to a boss younger than them because yeah. of the reliance on the digital age. But, you know, these younger leaders have high uh, 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 digital uh, intelligence, but low emotional intelligence. And as Chip Conley says, you can't microwave emotional intelligence. <laughs> no, that's for sure. And I see like one of the, um, let's for instance, right, I see one of the companies you did work with in the past is is the Ritz-Carlton, right? And I mean, you go to Ritz-Carlton and, uh, you know, there's a lot of young people who work there, clearly, but yet they somehow the Ritz has been able to, uh, you know, ensure that they have the same kind of interpersonal skills that somebody who worked there you know, 50 years ago would or has worked there for 50 years ago. So what are some of the things that an organization do, like that does to ensure that as people come in, that they train them in how to be, how to engage in the way that that, that brand wants them to? You know, so, so great question. They teach, you know, the art of relationship building. And to some of us, you know, this may seem, you know, obvious, but it's not anymore. So, you know, there's five steps to being, you know, great at, at building relationships. You know, must be authentic, right? Everyone has BS detectors today. You can tell when someone has an, a hidden agenda versus they're truly out for the best interests of you. They're, they, you know, the, the next one is in having insatiable curiosity. Well, because of devices and stuff, you know, we, we aren't curious. We're not investigated reporters. Um, I love to, um, you know, I, 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 we're all genetically coded to, to be about ourselves, right? It's mm -hmm. my flight that was sure. delayed. It's my son <laughs> that, you know, is struggling in school. So we always, one of the best things we teach people is when you're building relationships with your neighbor, a stranger in an elevator, a client, is focus on their Ford, F-O-R-D. And, and if you focus on someone's Ford, you not only build the relationship, you own the relationship. Because to each of us, our own Ford is what, is our, what we're most passionate about. So family, occupation, recreation, and dreams. So if that keeps me, you know, not talking about myself and focused on, you know, one or two of those things, I'm going to find out, you know, where your hot buttons are. So mm -hmm. um, be authentic, have insatiable curiosity, must have incredible empathy, must genuinely love people, and, and must be great listeners. And so of that five keys to, uh, you know, the art of relationship building, I honestly believe and know for a fact that four of them can be taught. Um, right. And now it's nice if you find candidates that have those, mm -hmm. but they definitely can be taught. The only one that I, I, I truly don't believe can be taught that we must find people is um, must love people. I, I don't think yeah. you can teach people <laughs> to love people, right? I, I just think that's, that's either in you or not. 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think that's a, and I think that's an important um, consideration. Then I think as <clears throat> as companies recruit, and particularly if you're recruiting in any you know customer facing or customer experience part of your organization, is to uh, you know recruit people who want to please people who want to create good experiences. If you don't, I mean, which is fine because there are plenty of people in the world who do amazing things who aren't people people, right? Um, but if you're going to have if you're going to build good customer experience and has to be built by people who love people. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, and those are the people I want to be around. I, you know, another, I, I, I get into words. I don't know if you get into words, but right now my favorite word is energy. And uh, I heard uh, 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 Mark Moses uh, say, um, you know, are you a CEO? And, and he said, CEO stands for chief energizing officer. And I mm -hmm. love that. You know, and, and when you come into a room, right, when, when you, you know, you know, you bring up the energy or, or, or are you an energy sucker? And I believe, you know, the people I want to hang, if my phone rings right now and I'm available, there are good friends that or relatives I may send a voice out just because I, I just don't have that. I just can't deal with that, you know, drain mm. right now. You know, maybe on a long drive where I, I need to keep awake, I'll have that call. But, you know, and then there's other people. I, I only have about 30 seconds, but I need to take that call because because they they will, you know, they're like a kick of caffeine. They will mm -hmm. make me feel better uh, about myself or what I'm doing. And I think that's an incredibly important point, though, to make is that, is, and especially for this, the salespeople uh, who, are, who are listening and watching is, um, I've, I've said recently, I wrote a bit about it, but it's like, during your day, you face enough rejection, you face enough no's, you face enough struggles Like as a salesperson. As I say, you need to put good influences into you during the day. So if it is that person who's calling you and you know that's the, that's the person who loves to have a whine about something, don't take the call. You know, take it on Friday evening talking, and you have a beer. Uh, you're not talking about red or white wine, right? You're no, no, about no. I'm talking about good old fine, good old <laughs> WH uh, wine. Yeah, so yeah, it's, yeah. it's like, don't take that call because it's probably not going to put you in the greatest frame of mind for what you're trying to do. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, with your salespeople, another thing I love, a metaphor I love to use is are you and your clients bomb shelter? And, and what I mean by that is I think we all have a metaphoric bomb shelter, personal one and a business one. And so if we were, you know, the world was ending, we were getting attacked. My personal one is I'm, I'm, I'm taking my significant other and my three kids and, now, my, my professional one, I, I always say, there's only three seats in that, in that uh, right. professional bomb shelter. Which vendor partners am I taking that I can't fathom life without versus oh, a printer or my bank or whatever? I'm saying, oh, that's okay. I can, I can find someone probably cheaper tomorrow. But John, I can't live without John. I mean, you know, I... I, I, I even I, I, when, I, when we're talk, making a big decision, I, I ask him, not because I think he knows necessarily the answer, because it might be out, but I know he knows someone that will. And I can't right. fathom life without, you know, John. And, well, and I think that's a great point for people to take away. So that is the kind of relationship that you want to be building with your customers or your partners or whatever, is ask yourself, am I on the list? Am I on the bomb shelter list? <laughs> and if you're going, I don't think I am, then how do I get onto the bomb shelter list? Right. And it's, it's being a resource broker, right? It's, mm -hmm. it's caring as much about their business as they do. It's, it, it's that they never meet anyone at, at, at what you do smarter than, than you are. Um, you know, and it's genuinely having their interests first. And, and you educate versus sell, right? Which means sometimes you talk them out of buying because it's not the right purchase. Yeah. But man, you do that to them, they'll, they'll trust you forever. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, and I think that's the, that, that's the important, and it goes back to what you were talking about earlier and about, you know, key characteristics and, you know, that comes with, uh, you know, integrity and empathy and all that kind of thing is where you do have the wherewithal to say, you know, my solution isn't really going to work for you. And yeah, I could, you know, in your mind, you'd say, yeah, I could probably talk them into it, but it wouldn't be the right thing for them. Right. And to be honest, it wouldn't be the right thing for me ultimately. either. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I agree. Mm -hmm. 
So uh, as we run up against the end of our time here, John, what is, what, is, uh, what is something else that people could take a look at today, maybe just for themselves as individuals, uh, that could maybe kickstart better relationships for them? Yeah, I think it's just, uh, you know, doing an audit um, a, a, of your professional relationships. And obviously this applies to personal, but, you know, we, we, we typically have six, you know, key uh, professional relationships. You know, our leaders, our employees, our customers, our vendor partners, um, the community and, and, and influencers, people, you know, that we, we need to be around that, that, you know, that the energy givers and, and influencers. And then you kind of do an audit and, and you rank, you know, how good those relationships are versus how good they could be and what you need to do to go out and, 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 and build, you know, that strength of relationship. And like you said, who are you surrounding yourself with? Um, are you putting yourself in the right situations? And are you being, a, you know, a strong relationship? Are you making positive introductions for them? Are you losing sleep at night? So, you know, John, you asked me last week, about a situation and it made me think over the weekend and I thought of a great article I recently read in the Harvard Business Review and here I, I want to send you it you know stuff like that I mean that's you know people are like wow he's actually thinking about you know my problem on his off time right yeah and I think that's it and, and again I think that's something that y you can't really fake I mean I know people have tried you know people have tried to write all these things about oh you know pretend create value and send stuff and whatever but but that is like something that when you genuinely do sit down and think about something say oh yeah I remember John mentioning that to me all right and actually this seems to be what he was talking about that's something that you can't really fake no not at all and genuine is true and and you know I, I have a quote that pops up on my phone every morning at 6 a.m. And it says, act as if today's the day you'll be remembered for how you treat people. And, yeah. and, and that's really important, right? And, and I, listen, I don't always, you know, uh, I, I don't always crush it. But, but you know, I, I don't, I, I act as if today's the day that you'll be remembered for how you treat people. And that's strangers. You know, I get in an elevator and say, dude, I, you know, I love those glasses, you know, or whatever that may be. You know, you, you, they, 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 they walk away with a bounce in their step. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think that's a, I think that's a great piece of advice to end with is uh, just uh, just look at your engagements uh, on a daily basis and just see maybe if everybody kicked up their engagements on a daily basis by five percent, the world would be a better place, right? Absolutely, that's the relationship economy. All right, listen, that's great, John. Before we go, you can tell people a little bit more about yourself, your organization, how they can find out more about you. Yeah, the DeJulius Group, uh, the DeJuliusGroup.com. Uh, we're a customer service consulting firm. So you can visit us online at the DeJuliusGroup.com or uh, you can reach me at John at the DeJuliusGroup.com and love to hear from you. Yeah, and you can see from the some of the logos behind John that they, they work with some of the best of the best. And I think if any of you had experiences in some of those with some of those brands, you'll know they know what customer service and customer experience is all about. All right. Well, listen, John, thanks very much for joining me. John Golden, Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine, Pipeliner CRM. See you all for another expert interview really soon. Thank you.